Hey, this is René for GNS Trivolt, and in this lab, uh, we'll take a look at VLANs and trunks. So before we start, keep in mind I'm using real switches for this lab. Um, you can do some trunking in GNS3 with the NM16 switch module, but it's very basic. It, it it's limited. So if you want to practice VLANs and trunks, it's best to use some real switches. Anyway, this is the topology. Three switches, plenty of interfaces, so we can play around with our um, trunks and VLANs. Um, anyway, let's get started. First of all, I need to create a couple of VLANs here. And you could use VTP, so you only have to create them on a single switch, or you can create them on all of the switches. And what I'll do is I'll type them in a text editor and then we'll just copy and paste them to all of the switches so VLAN 10 engineering um, VLAN 20 should be marketing research ok uh, not management, but management. Okay. So that's one switch. Second one. And the last one. So that's the first step, create all the VLANs. Second step. Fast Ethernet uh, 1 on switch 1 should be an access interface in VLAN 10. So let's go to the interface. Switch port mode access. It's best to put the interface in access mode yourself. And then you type VLAN access VLAN 10. Show interface. Switch port. You can verify your configuration. So it's in access mode and it's in VLAN 10. We'll do the same thing on switch 2, but now for VLAN 20. Fast Ethernet port 2. So switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Show interface switch port. It's in access mode VLAN 20. Alright, the next step. One of the links between switch 1 and switch 2 should use ISL encapsulation. So I got two links between switch 1 and 2, and I'll use interface 14 to configure it for ISL encapsulation. So the first question is, what kind of encapsulation are we using right now? So it says encapsulation negotiate. I can also see that it is not trunking at the moment. So let's take a look at the switch port information. It says administrative mode dynamic auto. And the result is that it's a access port. Administrative Trunking Encapsulation, Negotiate. So what we have to do is, first of all, I need it to be a trunk port, and it should use ISL for the encapsulation. So trunk encapsulation, configure it to use ISL, and I'm also going to configure it as a trunk port myself. Let's do the same thing on switch 2. So let's take another look at the interface. First of all the switch port information. It's using ISL and you can see that it is now a trunk port. So that's what we are 
looking for. Um, okay, so we got one link that's using ISL now. Second step, one of the links between switch 2 and 3 is not allowed to dynamically negotiate a trunking protocol. Um, okay, so there are three options for um, choosing a trunking protocol. You can set it to ISL, you can set it to dot one q or you can set it to negotiation. And the default is negotiation. So let's change it for interface 17 between switch 2 and switch 3. So let me show you the interface switch port. You can see trunking encapsulation negotiate. So I needed to set it to ISL or dot one q. So let's change it and set it to dot one q. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q. Show interface. Let's verify our configuration. You can see the encapsulation is now dot one q. So that's what we are looking for. Okay, so I changed uh, the encapsulation type to dot one q, so we're not longer negotiating for a trunking protocol. The next step, one of the links between switch 1 and 3 should never send any DTP messages. So even if you uh, do not use negotiation for the, the interface state, the switch port state, like trunk or access, or the negotiation for ISL or dot one q, it still uses DTP, dynamic trunking protocol messages. And there's a command you need to use to disable it. So let me show you how to do this uh, between switch 1 and 3. And I'm going to use interface 16 on switch 1 and 14 on switch 3. So this is the command switch port no negotiate. But it's giving me an error because the interface is still in dynamic auto or dynamic desirable. So first I need to change the interface. I'll put it to dot one q and I'll configure it as a trunk myself. And then you can use the no negotiate option. So if you type no negotiate, it will no longer send any DTP messages. Of course we need to do the same thing on the other side. So encapsulation dot one q mode trunk switch port no negotiate. And there it goes. So no negotiate is the um, what you need to do to disable the DTP messages. Next step, only VLAN 1, 10 and 20 are allowed between switch 1 and switch 2. Uh, okay, so that's interface 13 and 14. So let me show you one of the interfaces. Trunk. Okay, so right now it says mode auto encapsulation negotiate status. No, not trunking. And that's probably because... By default, the interface is in dynamic auto mode on both switches, which means that the result is a uh, access port. So I need to change the switch port type on one of the interfaces. So let's make it a trunk port on this side. And I'm unable to do so before I change the encapsulation type so let's set it to dot one q switch port mode trunk
And let's take a look. Show interface. Trunk. Okay, so now it's trunking dot one q, and you can see by default all the VLANs are allowed on the trunk. I only have these VLANs, the, and those are active on the trunk at this moment. But everything is allowed. And what we're going to do is make sure that only VLAN 1, 10 and 20 are allowed between switch 1 and 2. So what I'll do is use the interface range command because I need to configure both interfaces. And what I'll do is say switch port trunk allowed VLAN and I'll do none which will remove all the VLANs and then I'll say add 1 10 and 20 and we can verify our configuration you can see now it says VLAN 1, 10 and 20 are allowed on the trunk and the same thing applies to interface 14 so I did this, did this on switch 1, I should do it on the other switch as well. So interface range 13 and 14, switch port trunk allowed VLAN none, and then I should add 1, 10 and 20. So that's it. Use the allowed VLAN command and you can change the VLANs um, that you want to use on your trunk. Between switch 2 and 3 I should do the same thing, but now for VLAN 1, 10, 20, 40 and 50. And I'm using interface 16 and 17 on both sides. So 1, 10, 20, 40 and 50. Allowed VLAN, none, add 1, 10, 20, 40, and 50. Let's verify our configuration. And you, you could check the same thing with the switch port command. You can see it over here. Trunking VLANs enabled. This is the list. But I prefer to use the trunk command because it's a nicer uh, overview. So you can see the trunks like this. And it seems to be working. So let's do the same thing on this side. Switch port trunk, allowed VLAN, none. Switch port trunk, allowed VLAN, add 1, 10, 20, 40, and 50. That's it. Last step. The native VLAN between switch 1 and 3 should be 50 on both links. So on switch 1 that's interface 16 and 17. So let's go to this interface. And we're getting a funky message here. It says spanning tree received non-trunk. Received 802.1Q BPDU on non-trunk fast ethernet uh, 17 and it's being blocked so let me check what is going on here let's check the switch port information it's in dynamic auto and it has become an access port and interface 17 is connected to port 13 on switch 3 so let's take a look Over here it's in dynamic desirable mode and it has become an access port. So not entirely sure why we are seeing this message. But what I'll do is make sure I'll configure the interface as a trunk myself. And I'll do the same for uh, let's take a look. 
interface 16. So let's make sure interface 16 is also a trunk. And I think it's sufficient to do it on one side. So if I look at interface uh, 17, it's now trunking and using 802.1Q. So that seems to be okay. Uh, I still have to change the native VLAN. So you can see the native VLAN right here. By default, it's VLAN 1. Uh, it's okay to change it as long as it's the same on both sides. So let's change it on 16 and 17. Switch port trunk native VLAN 50. Uh, of course, I'm getting an error right away because uh, the native VLAN, we, we now have a mismatch on both sides. So I need to change it on this switch as well. And on this side it's 13 and 14. Switch port trunk native VLAN 50. You can see um, it also shows up through CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, that we have a native VLAN mismatch. Now I changed the native VLAN, so now it says unblocking, port consistency restored. And we can verify our configuration by looking at the trunk information again. It now says native VLAN 50. And on this side it still says not trunking. So maybe I have to be a little bit more patient. Or it's perhaps a better idea to set it to trunking myself. Trunk encapsulation. Um, so I didn't change the encapsulation type between switch 1 and 3. Nope. So let's change it. Dot one Q switchboard mode trunk. It's always best to configure the trunk and the access port yourself because the dynamic stuff is all nice and funky and it will try to do things auto magically for you, but it doesn't always work the way you want it to be. So now it says trunking native VLAN 50. And the same thing for 14. Um, so that's it. That's already the last task of this lab. So that's all that I wanted to show you about trunking. You saw ISL, .1Q, how to disable uh, DTP messages. Uh, we changed the native VLAN and we played a little bit with the uh, switchboard mode, like trunk, access mode, or dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and till next time.